Welcome back, friends, to the shop. We woke up this morning. Guess how cold it was? One degree. One degree. So that is a good day to be at the wood shop. So I had a couple repairs I was doing. Sometimes what I do is, uh, uh, you know, for example, like, you know, we'll go through, we'll get some shoes that are falling apart or different things. And what, what I'll typically do is I'll kind of set those aside until I have two or three at one, uh, to fix at one time. Same thing with shoe polishing. When I do my shoe polishing, it's not my favorite thing to do. I'll, I'll get everyone, all of them together and just sit down, you know, while we're watching a movie or something and do all that stuff. So I've got some shoes to repair today. And well, because of everything needs to be done quicker, faster, uh, and easier, um, shoes are just not what they used to be. Mrs. W, I bought her these um, Alpina cross country boots. Uh, we've only got a couple seasons on them and they don't even have any wear, hardly any wear on the on the Vibram sole there. And uh, they've failed, come apart. So a lot of folks would just throw these away, but I'm gonna show you a couple tricks where you can easily repair these um, and get many, many more years of use out of them. So let me show you the stuff that I use. There's a couple different things that work pretty good. Uh, and then we'll uh, go through the process. To fix a big flapping tongue like this, there's a couple things that I've used. This is, my granddad used to repair shoes uh, with the shoe goo. He, he was a big fan of this and I've used this for lots of stuff. It's pretty durable stuff. What I have found is that on ski boot type of things or when you're in really cold climates, it does tend to get a little bit brittle and kind of wants to break off again or separate or just maybe it just doesn't seem to stick as well as it did uh, when it's warm. If you're just living in a warm environment, uh, I've never had any problem with it. It's a pretty good way to go. It's a good household thing to have around uh, it, for fixing more than just shoes, just anything that you, that's kind of soft and, and you need to stick back together again. What you just can't, what just can't be beat, and uh, man's yet to invent anything that holds as good as just old-fashioned contact cement. Get yourself a quarter of this next time you go to Home Depot. Just get the little one. You'll be surprised on how much stuff you can use this for. This stuff sticks. And the nice thing about this is it sticks immediately, where this is 24 hours. So let's, uh, let me show you how I do my applicator. Let's put the camera overhead here, and then you can see up close all of the, all of the interesting details here. All right, here we go. My favorite applicator for all this sort of thing are the, just the little plastic brushes. Or plastic. The little foam brushes you get at Home Depot. You can buy these things by a, a pack and just get the big ones. Because you can always trim down the big ones, but you can't, if you get a, as soon as you buy a little one, you know, you always have that guy, little guy left. And then you want to, you know, do something with a, there you need a bigger brush, then you're kind of in trouble. So I just cut these down. Uh, to what I need, like that. And the nice, I think whatever, why everyone likes these guys so well is you don't have to clean them. And that's a, that goes a long ways, especially when you're dealing with stuff like contact cement. Okay, so. Yeah, I know, I know. But it's a Benchmade, so it can, work outside of its designed <laughs> area of expertise. That's really stuck on there. Okay, well, I just love contact cement. It does really work good. Okay, so what, I, what you do, you wanna make sure your shoe is good and warm uh, before and dry and clean. If you got a bunch of grass and grease and stuff in there, get that all out of there. I cleaned this off, uh, sprayed a little alcohol on it and then put, warmed it up by the wood stove. So it's actually nice and warm and get that thing opened up the best you can. I just take a short pencil, stick it in there like that, hold that thing open for you. All right, be, it says here, uh, it was interesting and I was reading the instructions on the contact cement, is that uh, don't open the can if, if you're in your shop and you have a, uh, a furnace, <laughs> a gas furnace, because it is pretty toxic. I mean, you can smell the fumes coming off of it. And it, uh, I guess there has been instances or there, someone's afraid of the, uh, one of those furnaces turning on and, and uh, turning your garage into a bomb. Well, that'd be, a, that'd be an ugly surprise, wouldn't it? Okay, so contact cement, you don't need to get crazy here. You can see that there's a bunch of ribs on there. You know, that, that's where the glue comes into contact there and especially on the edges. So get back in there as far as you can. Uh, you know, I take that foam brush and squish that guy down in there. Uh, and the most important thing is to cover every single bit uh, of this area, especially up in here. 
And don't, don't get too carried away with this context, amen. I mean, it's one of those things. A little goes a long ways. Um, and you need to, before we stick it on there, it needs to be dry, like not tacky, dry to the touch. That's the thing with context, amen. I think a, fo- a lot of guys don't like using it because once it touches, because we're going to, when you use context, amen, you do both sides, right? Once, the, once it touches, uh, it's set and you're not moving it. So if you have something that needs to be kind of repositioned, um, it sometimes can be a real, a real pain. Uh, and you don't, by going too thick, then you have the problem, you know, you're waiting forever for it to dry. So, um, yeah. So th- these being, you know, a tool shoe or utility shoe, you know, I'm not overly concerned about if I get a little bit of adhesive up on the sides, uh, it's not the end of the world. You know, I mean, if you're repairing your wife's uh, uh, Bruno Malley's or her, or her Gucci shoes, as I know most of your women like to wear, like Mrs. W., then, uh, of course, you want to be a little bit more careful and not to be ham-fisted and be getting glue all over everything. All right. Okay, so that's uh, pretty well coated. Everything's in there nice and good, especially, again, I can't emphasize this enough, especially this toe area. Get that really good because that's where it's really going to... There's a lot of surface there. There's not much surface down there in those, those little wavy ribs, rib deals where we're really going to bite is right around that, uh, right around that toe box there. I keep a little heater in the shop, and I'll uh, just turn that on low and move a little air past there, get that drying up uh, a little quicker. What you're looking for with that contact cement is just make sure that when you touch it, it's not tacky, meaning it doesn't leave a little, little kind of a string or it's sticky, tacky. It's still a little bit tacky right there. You want that to be uh, pretty much, well, non-tacky to the touch, and then we're ready to to uh, stick it together. I think we are ready to go. We got the, the tack is gone. Now, have your masking tape ready. Uh, green or blue tape, it doesn't leave the sticky residue behind, especially when you're dealing with anything that's got heat in it. Now, if you're using the shoe goo, because it doesn't adhere on contact and it takes 24 hours, like if we put shoe goo in here and push these together, unless we hold that really firmly, it'll just peel off and it'll ruin the shoe because it'll dry somewhat separated and as you're walking on it, you'll feel all the lumps in there. It's really horrible. So if you're gonna, if you're, if you're gonna do the same thing with the shoe goo, use uh, electrical black tape, the uh, standard electrical tape because it's got stretch in it. And once, once you adhere it, then you can wrap that really tight and that will actually compress and pull in. And that's something that the uh, regular masking tape won't. So, Roll this in, put pressure on the instep there on the, on the, the arch um, and until it, it makes a contact here. And be careful when you, if you have tennis shoes that have like the lips that, that kind of come out the side, make sure that you pull those back as you're pressing the shoe in and then you can adhere them kind of like that. And having the shoe warm makes a big difference, having that heater on there. So press that in there, get on the inside and press it down with all your weight and really work that edge uh, right there, especially. That's where you're really going to get your bite on that edge. It feels, it feels good to fix something that, that you, sometimes you look at, you kind of get in the mindset of uh, that disposable mindset, or at least I do sometimes, and, and you think, oh, you know, when you get busy and and you get your time, you know, you don't, I don't have time to deal with that. It's just easier just to go buy new ones. Well, it takes time to make the money to buy that new one is what, you know, you got, what you got to remember. So what's your, what's your time worth? And that's why, you know, being organized and having everything where you know it, when you have something that needs fixed, it, there's something, there's so much to be said for <clears throat> the, the sim, simplistic, the simple lifestyle, the lifestyle of uh, an austere lifestyle with, you know, not so much, many possessions. I'll tell you what, Mrs. W is on a tear right now. She's been following these podcasts and reading all these books about, you know, minimalizing and how how a chaotic home and a house that's just full of clutter and, and stuff is a, it, it kind of makes a chaotic mind and a chaotic life. Uh, and what we're finding is we're, it was really nice today, like when I needed my stuff, my shoe stuff, I had it all in one place and pulled it out and I needed a paintbrush and it was I knew exactly where it was, and it was just a joy. The whole experience was, was fun rather than just being aggravating. And that, um, 
I'm kind of ram, I'm, I'm rambling here, but uh, I think you get my point. But that looks good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to put my tape on there, and I will under tension. I'll pull that tight. I'm not going to. I don't want to deform the shoe. You don't want to pull it that tight. But just imagine like a a firm handshake. A firm handshake. This tape is a little bit old. And then I'll just leave that on there, and that will, uh, let's see, it's got a sharp edge on it, kind of keeps breaking that tape. And that will hold that on there. Hopefully I didn't slop too much glue on the outside and it stick to the tape, but that feels pretty good. Let's, let's, yeah, well I think that'll work. Yeah, so there you go. There's, a, there's your repaired shoe with nothing fancy, nothing, you don't need anything, just some contact cement, which is gonna, you use for a million different reasons, a million different things. I was wondering about this one, if I should, I tried to pull it off to see if maybe this one needs repair, but I'm, I'm gonna leave that one alone, well enough alone, because it doesn't uh, seem to be a problem. Okay, well, we'll uh, let that sit. She can use those tomorrow, but I picked them up today. She had, uh, she'd wrapped them up with packing tape. I, f I felt, she'd, you know, I, she'd ask, she's been asking me about to do this for like three days, and you know, and I can't. Oh yeah, yeah, I'll get till I get to it. And and I, and uh, I, you know, I guess I woke up this morning and it dawned on me, like you know what? When a woman asks you to do something like that um, patiently and in a loving manner, like Mrs. W always does, it's more than just her asking you to do something. It is her asking for an affirmation of. It, it, basically, I think what she's saying is, is do you care about me and do you love me? And because men and women show love in different ways, and sometimes, you know, she'll, w women like to talk a lot more than men, or at least in our relationship, typically. I think that's the case. And Mrs. W, you know, she'll want to talk about this and that. And, and you know, so, sometimes I'm just not interested. I don't communicate that way. Uh, and I, I'll tell her, you know what, honey, I love you to pieces, but this conversation would be better off for you and your friends when you have your book club. You know, and, that, and that's her key, like, oh, okay, I, you know, I, my husband is my husband, um, and I don't want to treat him like my girlfriend, you know, because I don't want to be your girlfriend. I want to be your husband. I want to be your boyfriend. I want to be your lover. I want to be your man. I don't want to be her counselor uh, or her girlfriend. So how men, how I think most of, the, most of us, how we show our love towards our, lives, our, our wives and girlfriends is, is with our hands. Um, by making things and, and doing things. And, and so I, you know, I, it dawned on me this morning, you know, she's asking me to do this. She could do it, easily do it herself uh, because she just needs a little affirmation. You know, she needs to hear what, or just to know once in a while that I was thinking enough about her and I, I was thinking it was important enough for me uh, to set aside the things that I wanted to do or needed to do um, just to do a simple task of fixing her shoes. And I should have done it earlier. Uh, and the fact that she had asked me three times was kind of a rebuke to me. So if your wife asks you to do those things, make sure you push that up on the priority list because it's more than just her giving you busy work, busy work I think. I mean, who can know the female mind? But I, th but I, th I think it is, um, I think it, it is a, I think it's a way to say, just to, just to show your affection and, and, to, and to show that you're thinking about one another. So yeah, well, you weren't expecting that from the shoe video. All right, thanks for watching. Click the thumbs up if you haven't any haven't already. Uh, a lot of folks are having trouble finding the channel over on BitChute. You just go to BitChute and type in Wrangler Star. Um, I'll put I put links and pin links and all that. But um, uh, go on over there. Uh, we're gonna have some some. Uh, we're gonna have a gun video coming up here pretty soon. I'm um, looking forward to that. So that's it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys on the next video.